So <clears throat> this morning's keynote speakers eloquently underscore the profound public health implication of AMR. While antibiotics undoubtedly stand as remarkable molecules that save countless lives daily, we cannot overlook the pressing challenge of AMR. For decades now, we have witnessed a concerning escalation in AMR, manifesting in a substantial toll on human health, with over one million deaths annually. However, it's crucial to recognize that the impact extends beyond human. Animals are also significantly, significantly affected. And while approximately 40% of global agriculture relies on livestock, and one in five people depends on livestock for their income and livelihoods, our understanding of the AMR burden in animal health remains limited. According to the 2023 report from the United Nations Environmental Program, AMR could potentially increase animal mortality rates by 1%, resulting in a staggering equivalent loss of 13 billion US dollars in livestock value. Notably, three billion of this loss is attributed to waterborne AMR alone. So we cannot ignore the important role of the environment in AMR. Indeed, the environment plays a dual role in AMR. It serves both as a reservoir for both resistant bacteria and resistant genes, and also as a source of new potential superbugs. Bacteria and resistant genes can readily disseminate across all ecosystems, including human, animal, and environment. The AMR network is intricate, and addressing AMR effectively necessitates tackling all value chain across all three sectors, human health, animal health, and the environment. This approach aligns with the recommendation from the European Commission and international organizations, emphasizing the importance of a comprehensive One Health approach. Nevertheless, for our efforts to yield success, we require a synchronized political commitment that bolsters our actions and amplifies our messages. Numerous declarations and plans have been issued at both the European and international levels, underscoring the urgency of addressing AMR. Notably, AMR holds a prominent position on the agendas of prestig prestigious gatherings such as the G7 and G20 summits. The European Union has taken proactive steps in addressing the issue of AMR, establishing a framework in 2016 to foster synergy among all member states in advancing our collective fight against AMR. France led the coordination of the inaugural UJAMRA initiatives from 2017 to 2021, collaborating with 44 partners. The primary objective was to assist member states in formulating effective One Health policies to combat AMR. We provided essential tools, key recommendations, and policy briefs aimed at empowering stakeholders and policymakers to integrate AMR strategies into national action plans. However, our efforts must evolve further. And thanks to the EU for Health program, we now have with the UJAMRI2 a tremendous opportunity to expand our efforts and support member states in implementing concrete measures to combat AMR, ultimately improving the health outcomes of their citizens. This can be achieved through the endorsement of concrete measures in national policies and I particularly like this study, which was done in the Americas. It shows a direct link between the mortality rate associated with AMR and the successful implementation of a published 
and governance financed national action plan. Now, back to our joint action. Let's delve into the structure and objectives of UJAMY2. Let's take a closer look of what UJAMY2 entails. Our keywords for the next four years are member state engagement, national activities, capacity strengthening, behavior change, cross-sectoral concrete actions, education, training, public awareness, and sustainability. It's a very ambitious program. And this program is divided into 10 main actions led by different countries. These are on the slide the names of the action and the countries who are leading them. I won't go into detail now. This afternoon, the leaders of each action will present their plans to you. And while we operate as 10 working group, it is not in isolation, but in synergy. In the word of, in the word of Aristotle, the wall is greater than the sum of its parts. Every action in one area will impact the others. Collaboration is the cornerstone of our approach and for national implementation, it is the key to success. Together, we will achieve more than we could alone. And how can we succeed? With the full engagement of all involved, UJAMI2 brings together 128 partners from 30 countries, comprising the 27 member states of the European Union, along with Norway, Iceland, and Ukraine. Our team is truly representative of diverse cultures and institutions, united in our commitment to this ambitious program for the next four years. Together, we form a formidable European team dedicated to combating AMR and safeguarding public health. This is who we are. You will recognize many faces, maybe your own. Give yourselves a hand in the room and online. And how will we, will we be organized? Our organizational structure is critical to join forces and avoid duplicating our efforts. The executive board consists of the coordination team and the work package leaders and oversees program implementation. The coordinator will monitor the compliance with the different partners according to their obligation under the grant agreement and the work package leader will be in charge of managing their work package resources and planning. But the executive board will not be alone. During an annual general assembly, all competent authorities responsible for the execu execution of the joint action will convene to agree on major decisions. In addition, an advisory committee with the DGs of the European Commission, European agencies, and international organization will provide strategic guidance to the joint action. To ensure coherence in the engagement of stakeholders, a stakeholder forum, some of you are there and on, online also, so a stakeholder forum will be set up to receive periodic update of the joint action work. Thank you for your presence today. All of you, all stakeholders, will have the opportunity to provide recommendations based on their experience giving an important added value to the joint action. The executive board, under the supervision and in close collaboration with HADEA, guarantees that the rights and obligations of the partners are compliant with, with what has been signed with the Commission. Working hand in hand, we can maximize our resources, push boundaries, and reach our objectives faster. By putting our expertise and efforts, we can make significant strides in the fight against AMR and ultimately safeguard public health for generations to come. Indeed, we do, not have a we do not have a choice anymore, and we need to fight AMR for a safer world for our children and grandchildren. 
to be successful, we have to change the behavior. And to reach this goal, the joint action will increase understanding and awareness of AMR across European member states. Our fight is similar to that of another important global issue, climate change. Indeed, the challenges posed by AMR and climate change share several common features, global issues. Both AMR and climate change transcend national borders affecting communities worldwide. They require concerted international efforts to address effectively. Immediate threats. Both AMR and climate change present immediate threats to public health, environmental sustainability, and economic stability. Urgent action is needed to mitigate their impacts and safeguard future generations. Public engagement. Addressing AMR and climate change necessitates broad public engagement and awareness. Individuals, communities, governments, and organizations must work together to drive meaningful change and promote sustainable solutions. One Health. For both AMR and climate change, we need to think One Health to reach this safer world. By recognizing and leveraging the similarities between AMR and climate change, we can develop integrated approaches and collaborative strategies to tackle these pressing global challenges. Together, we can pave the way for a healthier, more sustainable future for all. Before concluding my presentation, I would like to thank all of you warmly here in the room and online all of the partners involved in the joint action for the hard work you have done towards writing the proposal. And a special thanks to the French team uh, who have assisted and guided me along the way. First of all, thank you, Mathilde and Sinead, um, who will now leave us for new projects. You have solutions for every problem and stay calm whatever the issues. Thank you so much. And a special mention to Johan, our project manager, who has been doing a tremendous job of coordination for more than one year now, and with whom you have been, and you will be, extensively exchanging emails. Thank you, Johan. It's a great pleasure to work with you. And also a warm thanks to INSERM for their trust, and specifically to Evelyn Jouvamarche, who is supporting us for all the project for many years. We cannot be here today without you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. And thank you to Richard Salib and its uh, uh, regional INSERM delegation who will help us in the administrative management of the joint action. Thank you, Richard, for your helpful advice. Thank you. So thank you so much to all of you for your trust and very friendly atmosphere. And to conclude my, my talk, I cannot resist adding a French touch. You may know the French novel, Les Trois Mousquetaires, and maybe you have seen the, mov the movie. But do you know their motto? All for one and one for all. This will be our motto for the next four years. I look forward to the collaborative efforts and shared accomplishment that lie ahead as we work together to combat AMR and safeguard the health and well-being of current and future generations. Thank you all for your dedication and commitment. Here's to the next four years of collective action and progress, all for one and one for all. Thank you. Thank you.